Okay, it being uh, slightly past 7.30, I'm going to open the meeting. Um, for everybody's information, this meeting is being recorded. And uh, we have nothing uh, time stamped here, so I think we could probably uh, um, why don't we stick, uh, Ryan? Why don't we start with the minutes? It's just I'm gonna go through an order here. No minutes. No minutes. Not in there. You guys okay. did a lot of talking. Uh, <laughs> I'm almost okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, so uh, for, main, for the Main Street, we have revised corridor study survey questions. I, I, I had a hard time opening that. Oh, you did? I opened it. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, I mean, it went round and round and round for a long time, and it never really opened. It's, it's just, mine's open. You want to read it? Well, wow. I'm, I'm it's just... Actually, it's actually, I thought it was, personally, I was able to read it, and I looked at it, I'm and I thought it was actually fairly good. Do you want me to email it to all of you? Well, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm wondering why we, we don't use Dropbox. <laughs> no. Because they, they got no. lazy. No, they say there are security problems with that. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing on here is secure. Everything is public knowledge. But you know, you know, I went back to look at something from last Yeah, I would have had this. This is this is just a, a, a not a huge. Well, it's got pictures in it, but I'm still downloading. Yeah. This, we got to we got to at least get on the, on the uh, employees. Website. You're still trying to download. Yeah. You're still trying to download. Just start questions. a vacation. So I'll follow up. I don't know. Two days of not having to think about working, we're like shifting back and just thinking. Yeah. Oh, don't shift too hard. Play, play, play the job. I'll be doing baby All they have to do is give us the password for the employee Wi Fi. That takes two seconds. Well, do you have the password because he loaded it in for you when he gave you your computers? And that's what he doesn't want to do. Give it to someone. But there's tons of places, so. No, like and, and, and we work for the town. I know. No, what I'm saying is, right? of course, there's and no town devices. But that's, yeah. but that's what it yeah, is. Basically, I've almost, it's take almost care of our daughter for the next couple of weeks, weeks while my wife Do you want me to continues you to work and yeah, yeah. she starts daycare. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have it open. Well, I mean, I got the first page open, but the next page is still loading. So, yeah. So, daycare and the rest of her life. Well, um. Uh, I mean, nine months this week. You can, it might not get there. Do you want to do some of the people I used to say? Yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do a couple other things. I'll let this try to download. Okay, um, tonight, so. okay guys, uh, warrant articles for the October Town meeting. What are, we, what are we. So I just wanted to bring this up. These are the um, ones for Jerry. We're probably going to bring something forward for him. So the only thing I think we've talked about targeting for this town meeting, I know Jerry wants to do the pool one. That would be a general bylaw and not a zoning bylaw, so we wouldn't necessarily be the sponsors of it. I think um, I talked to Barbara about the process for that, and she said there is no public hearing or anything. It's just a general bylaw. Normally right. what would happen is she recommends Jerry would just submit it, and um, it's possible, you know, of course we can offer an opinion about it, but there's no process for us to do. Usually if the select board wants to put that on the warrant, then they would be the sponsor. Normally that's what would but does it need to go to town meeting? Yeah. Okay. So so um, so they probably ask us to opine on it at the very least. Yeah. yeah. And then we'd um, and um, and then we'd pass it off to the board of selectmen who would then decide if well then if, if decide if they wanted to put it on. If they don't put it on town meeting, then it doesn't go into effect. So they're right. going to have to decide if they want it. Right. And it doesn't formally get um, sent to us like a zoning bylaw would. Um, I mean, I think we can give an opinion on it if we want, but. Yeah. It's, there's no, we're not part of the, the you know, the yeah. procedure for it. Well, I, my, my sense was that Jerry was hoping that we would at least look it over and, you know, give him some uh, input on it. I think um, we did already. Yeah, which we did. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, there was that one, and then the other one, which I was going to suggest that we do, which I think we've talked about, is um, the four properties in the affordable housing overlay district that we yeah. really want to yeah. um, yeah. put out for RFP. And everything else I think we talked about doing at a future town meeting, um, probably June, for the, for the ADs going, and yeah, things, yes. for that one, possibly inclusionary zoning and some other things that have come up. But I don't, I just wanted to discuss that to be sure there wasn't any other bylaw that we were hoping to target for October because right, of right. our closes on the 16th. Right. 
Vincenzo, have you been able to, have you been up to date on the ADU stuff that we've been doing with the different towns that we've uh, taught, that we've uh, petitioned to ask what they've done for accessory dwelling units and what they, what their laws are. We had, and I know we started. I've heard the, I heard the discussion. Okay, we started with Reading and then we got a bunch, a bunch more, which, okay, just, um, you know, if you get a minute at some point to go look through those, it's pretty interesting, actually, okay. what other towns have done. So. So, um, um, so I don't know. Do we? We don't really have to, as a, as the. We don't really have too much of a discussion for. Um, um, other than, what do we think about the properties that the town wants to that that or we'd like to see go to uh, Habitat for Humanity. Um. Right. I mean, I really wanted to bring it up just to be sure that with the deadline approaching for the warrant, that I wanted to be sure there wasn't anything else we wanted to target for this town yeah. meeting. Um, and in terms of habitat, we could definitely I could just take the opportunity to kind of update you yeah, on um, what they got to Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, like that. Um, they've made it known um, that they're interested in 57 Haverhill Street, um, 44 and 46 Oakdale, and yeah. um, 7 St. Teresa Street. So, um, of course, it would be an RFP process where it would be open and it wouldn't be a highest bidder situation. It would be a best overall value for our right. whole situation. Right. Um, we would structure it that way. So, it would, but it would be open to everyone. Um, but they've made it known that they would be interested in those properties. So, is this one? Is this an article we would bring forth? Yes. Okay. So, what I've done is I've connected with um, KP to discuss what would need to be done for disposition, and they um, they have the ta the town and land files. Uh, there's one on each of the properties and um, John Eichmann is reviewing them and we'll draft uh, the articles uh, based on the, the type of, you know, they're all a little bit different in terms of how they were so taken. So do we need, we need to take a vote or a consensus on this? You don't need to do anything now. I just wanted to bring it up and just, I just I did want to be sure that you wanted to go ahead with um, yeah. this. So what do you guys think about it? I mean, I, you know, if Habitat's willing to build these, these properties for us and provide us with some... Uh, Affordable housing. I mean, I think it's. Uh, I think it's the best use for the property. The yeah. Selectman have sold property smaller or a little bigger than this for a thousand or two thousand dollars. It doesn't matter because we, once it's built, it has a value. Right, it it's got a bigger it value with, with them building dollars. on it, and and the people that get um, these properties have to put sweat equity into these buildings. Right. Not only their own, but then they gotta go help someone else. Yeah, I'm very familiar so with that So it's, it's really a good, um, it's, it's really a good program. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I think so. Um, Ryan, what do you does, This doesn't make, change my opinion, but does it change the taxability of the land? Yes. Being a affordable well, once it's a house right. built on it, it becomes a taxable property. No, I mean, I'm sorry, because it's affordable versus? Well, it meant only, low, only value wise. It's discounted. The the way it's yeah, assessed yeah. is there's a discount. But then the rate's the same. We got nothing now. The flat rate that's correct. Right. 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 No, I understand that. that. So yeah, and I think it's a great idea. Yeah, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, it looks like uh, Rich. Does it, does it affect our WIM numbers at all? You know. Um, I think we would we would run the numbers to be sure, but it's sort of a, I mean it's it's an, it's a way to add. To yeah, they're gonna they're the gonna stuff. they're gonna make them, you know. Yeah, they're gonna, gonna, a, they're gonna have a deed restriction on. Them. They're gonna be recordable by the state. So yes. So it'll help us out. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if there's four, they might put ten units. I, I don't know say, how many they can put on. They're interested in single family houses. So we're just not talking families? huge yeah, they are, yeah. they're, they're Basically, what he was talking about was putting single-family homes on. That's what Habitat usually does. Yeah. Well, they, they, they do townhouses. Family. Yeah, because I've worked with them before, so I right. know. That's what they, they, do. they do do townhouses, yeah. right. side-by-sides, which yeah. is fine. For the one on Havel Street, that's a bigger property. Yeah, do we, uh, there's a good next question. Do we have any say in that? Is there an incentive to incentivize them to No, I don't, do I don't know, because, they, because they're, gonna, they're paying for it. Right. So, I mean, we're giving them the land and they're paying for, they're doing all the rest. They do everything so, um, else. Yeah. So, they, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that they have uh, a vested interest in providing as much housing as possible, but at the same, by the same token. They made that assessment already. Yeah, but, but, yeah. But, but, but by the same token, they, they do not want to um, um, create a, a, a piece of property 
that isn't consistent with the surrounding properties. In other words, they don't want this property to stand out as a, as a low rent place or a low income place. They want it to f f fit the neighborhood and, and have a similar appearance to the surrounding homes. So, so they're, gonna, they, they're not going to do anything different than, than, um, than what the surrounding, especially if they don't have enough room. You know, they're going to make a single family home. That's primarily what they do. Although I know that, you know, I know my church goes down and works in down South Carolina, places like that, and they, they do have a big lot. They've got a big piece of land and put five houses on it, but all of them are good-looking houses and have good separation, their own yards, you know, so forth. So, um, so um, I think it's a worthy cause. And I guess you, we can go on record as saying, Chris, we, yeah. we can go on record as saying that we're in favor of this and we'd like to see that happen. Um, I'll continue to work on the warrant articles. We'll submit them by yep. the deadline. Um, I have been asking if, um, you know, if at any point the select board might want to have it on their agenda. I know that the August 16th is a really busy night, so I wouldn't expect any real discussion that night. But um, I, you know, I think maybe between now and as town meeting starts getting closer, it would be great if we wanted to have maybe a discussion. Um, Habitat has offered to come in and speak with us about what they do and what they hope to do. Um, and we've talked about the fact that, you know, because this will be an RFP process, that, you know, it, it does have to be open. And so at a certain point, um, we, you know, those kinds of discussions would cease. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we would be asking them to tell us, hey, what exactly are you going to do at 57 Hyrule Street? I mean, I don't think that's something I think that we, um, um, I don't think that's something we should ask because it kind of, Sounds like we're subverting the process a little bit. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to do that. I would, uh, okay. I would want to give them an opportunity to come in and, and explain what they do and that they will do, make best use of these properties and that would be it. Because they did come in and talk to us. The guy did come in and talk to us mm -hmm. a little bit. There. So we do, do have a feel for what they're doing. But are you talking? You talking about him coming in and talking to the board of selectmen along with us? If they've offered to do that at whatever point we want, if we want them to, um, it could also be the kind of situation that if after, you know, say it does pass the town meeting and you know RFP goes out, and if they are the awarded party, they can come in and speak with um, the neighborhoods and talk about sure. what they do and how sure. they do it. Um, there, and at any point in this process, there there's be probably a few people that haven't heard of them, so I, I would imagine that yeah. there's not going to be too much, you know. Discussion on it. Tom Meany might be the only real help for us. Yeah, yeah. If they you wanted know, to come, if, if they if they may not be asked. Yeah. You know, but if there if there's a representative there that can answer questions. Right. That may come up. Not that they're going to get up and do a you know dog and pony show at mm -hmm. all, but it's always good to have someone there that can answer the questions that we can't answer. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and it, it may be just you know a safety. They may never get called on. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that'd be a good invite probably for that. So, so um, other than that, we're, we're just going to support. Um, we'd be supporting a general bylaw if the board of selectmen decide to bring it. Yeah, and I'll okay. coordinate with Jerry about the actual submittal of it. Okay. Um, but it would really be along the lines of what he had given us um, that addition of that line that we spoke about the last meeting. Right. Um, I know town council will need to review it because they'll want to make sure there's no inconsistency between um, that and state building code. Okay, are we all set with that then? Yeah. Okay. So um, after much ado, we finally got everything to come up on the, flat, on the iPad here. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go back to the revised corridor study survey questions. Okay. So just to remind everybody, we were a little concerned about the, that, that the questions that were here were kind of directing people in a, in, in a particular direction, in the bicycle direction. And, and so we asked them to take a look at it. And I guess this is a... Uh, an updated list of questions, is that the correct way of putting it? They revised it. Yeah, they did the revise it. They gave us pictures. I kind of, it, it, it's really, I think it's much better. Than <coughs> so as, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to uh, look at these, um, and if there's any, any opinions on these. Um, I was going to suggest one change, which is they ask if people want sidewalks along 20. And I, I would maybe clarify that to say, do we need to make sure that the sidewalks are consistent on both sides? Because obviously people are going to read that and say, but we do have sidewalks on 20. Yeah, no, They're that would be good. That's a, that's a good idea. Consistent. Do you believe Route 28 users would benefit from having sidewalks on both sides of the roadway for pedestrians? Mm -hmm. Complete sidewalks. Com because there consistent, are gaps. complete yeah. sidewalks from end to end. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, there was, there was some, you know, even on the what's there now, there's a couple of fairly long sections where there's not, nothing. It's just, yeah, they're, they're just walking along to get to one place to another. So um, but it's a fairly, uh, fairly long sections. And I don't know that it serves, um, I think the issue is, I think the sidewalks are pretty well placed on the, on the uh, east side of the road because on the, if you think about it, on the west side of the road, there are far more openings and far larger openings that would have to be sidewalked, which are also mean that without some kind of controls there, the interaction between people and vehicles is going to be high more likely, you know. Do you, you mean openings as in driveways? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you think about it, the, the, the driveways are, on the east side are, are not only smaller but fewer than everything on the west side. So it occurred to me that adding a sidewalk on the west side may not really, you they, know, accomplish the goal. But then you need more crosswalks. Except, well, that's true. But you, but think about it. Every one of those, like even the one going into the postal facility, there. Look how wide that whole thing is. Trying to put a sidewalk across there without any controls. So you may have to have crosswalks in a couple of places, but it's going to be far fewer of them than you're going to need to cross some of these huge driveways. Yeah. Well, those driveways are, 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 are uh, violating uh, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Yeah. Because well, they're, they're wider there. than 25 feet. But they're there. Feet, whatever, whatever the spec is. So what do you need to close I'm, them down? I don't well, know. It, when, if they rebuild the road, they may. Um, I think that a lot of them have some level of grandfathering, or that that you wouldn't that you would have difficulty defeating. Mm -hmm. But what well, 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 I wasn't looking. I was strictly looking at it from the from the the viability of uh, of, a, of a sidewalk on that side, as opposed to keeping the sidewalk on the other on the east side, which seems to have um, seems to have been well placed. Mm -hmm. You know, there may be a couple of sections of the west side of the highway of, of 28 that uh, would benefit from a section of sidewalk, but I think it would be spotty. So, so I'm, I, I certainly welcome input from anybody else. Is anybody else any comments if you think about that whole thing? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with your comment. Like, <coughs> to Chris's point, I think when you flush out the final design, it'll determine what they end up doing with the curb cuts in the roadway, and that may dictate the ultimate design. But the question of the people in the town, I think, is clear. Like a, a consistent path from one end of town to the other, mm -hmm. right. on one side or the other, frankly, is I think probably desirable, yeah. and that's what we're. We got a pretty good. We got a pretty good thing going on the east side. Yeah, yeah, it's almost complete. It's almost complete. But it's you can only cross that, in that area. Kitties. And at Walmart. Walmart. Even at Stop and Shop, there's not a crosswalk there. Well, I, I'm, I don't I'm believe not. there's a crosswalk there. It's not a cross light. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. There's lights, but there, there's not a crossing light there. So and Park Street yeah, and so North my, Street. My so my answer to that question would be, you know, would be, do you think it, uh, that, that I don't think it would be as advantageous as putting more crosswalks it would be? <laughs> putting another sidewalk. Yeah. I think one place you need it is on that bridge. Yeah. You know, the, the bridge over the, the wetland area. Mm -hmm. Because if someone's on that side, they'd be in the road. They've got to be off the road on mm -hmm. that bridge because there's nowhere to go because there's a guardrail there, you know, mm -hmm. from keeping you from jumping off. Can I just say, I mean, I've walked Main Street a couple times. I've walked the wall a lot and all that. And not having a sidewalk in the areas, it's, you tend to, it's more, it's, I think having more sidewalks on the other side would be safer than trying to cross Main Street yeah. because I feel nervous. Like, I'll, well, I'll, I'll cross over and go walk where the sidewalks are. Right. And then I wait until I get down to almost where the post office is. And that's when I will usually cross because there's like a hill so you can kind of see right. where the cars are coming and going. But I think it would be a good idea to put more sidewalks on the other side of the street. Yeah, so I think, sec like as I said, I think there are sections where it would be useful, mm -hmm. but I don't know that trying to do the whole thing would accomplish the, the, the goal. The driveways aren't, I mean, they're long, but there's not a lot of traffic pulling in and out of them. I've walked different hours of the day going down there, and I don't yeah. find that to be dangerous. 
I find it more dangerous crossing Main Street or having to walk where there's no sidewalk. Because right. you tend to, you know, some areas of grass, you know, not very good, so you tend to belong onto Main Street to walk right. in certain areas. Which so, is dangerous. Yes. Especially with the cars right back. Yes. If you can see them, you can get out of their way, mm -hmm. even if it means jumping. That's how I was taught to walk when I grew up in the town that I grew up in, which was obviously more rural than North Reading was, mm -hmm. at least where I lived. Walk toward the track. Well, Always I mean, I think it's a fair, I think it's a good question, because I think it's, it's one that will actually, is that what you, you wondered about? I wanted to know whether you were happier with this set of questions than the first set of questions, and whether yeah. they responded Well, obviously to that feedback. question there generates some, some interest, so I think probably leaving that in is a good thing. Do you want it worded that way, or do you want it to be, well, I mean, I'll tell them to make yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I wouldn't change the wording of that question at this point. I would, but I was just going to say, I don't want people to read it and think that whoever wrote the survey wasn't aware that Route 28 has sidewalks. I wanted their to, them to at least acknowledge yeah. that what they're asking about is um, filling in those sidewalk gaps and making sure there are complete sidewalks throughout yeah. both sides of Main Street, because I don't want people to read it and think, oh, they, they don't know that there are sidewalks, because to me, that's how that reads. So, so what, would you, what would you do? Say there is an existing sidewalk on the east side, and, and would you be in favor of a similar sidewalk on the west side? No, I was going to say, um, do you, how, like, you know, something along the lines of how important do you think it is to ensure that both sides of Main Street have um, complete sidewalks, complete connected sidewalks? Okay. Or something along those lines. I mean, I don't so know. I it. Yeah, it seems like the idea is uh, continuous. Continuous, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. through the entire yeah, that's, stretch. That's yeah. a good word. Most people understand that one. Yeah. Okay. I, I know the one thing I mentioned to them was that they, you know, kind of have to sell the vision of the question they were asking them. So just in terms of order, I think the question four kind of gets to that. I would lead with that question. Lead okay. with uh, what do you imagine in the future? What do you want in the future? And then get into those questions. Um, hopefully that gets them in the right mindset. Okay. Mm. okay. And we, we get the bicycle question again on number seven. They got to ask it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I, I, I'm assuming everybody's got driven up through Reading. What does everybody think of that uh, that that uh, three lane situation going up? To, you oh, know, 28 through Reading. Yeah, oh, you I know, love it. It, it. you know, it doesn't really slow you down. There's not. I don't. I just don't see as much traffic on 28. I mean, I, I I'm in town a lot all day long, and I'm able to go <coughs> right to the speedway station, and I very rarely have to wait long to get out. Shell. Mm -hmm. The what? It's now a shell. The shell station? As of today. <laughs> oh, it's speedway a shell. Oh, shell. no. I, oh, really? I didn't go there today. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll be more careful. Well, actually, now doesn't Shell take stop and shop cars? Yeah, they do. Could be a little collusion there. I don't know. <laughs> um, Could be. Well, now that's good for. I mean, well, I I consider that good for the town as long as they don't jack the prices up and everything. Shell tends to be a little more pricey. Shell though. is the most expensive gas. Yeah, yeah. Because of their formula. Yeah. Well, but they. <laughs> yeah. But if it gives us an opportunity to use. The stop and shop card, you know, to gain some advantage. I suppose it's okay. So, but anyway, the, the point was that it, they're really getting in and out of, of uh, onto 28 isn't isn't for the most part most of the day is not really a huge hassle. So, no, it would be, so do it we would need four lanes, or is this uh, this three lane idea probably has some merit? So the the the, the problem I have is when you're going down in two lanes, and you got cars on your right. And somebody ahead of you decides, I gotta make a left hand turn. So they stop, put their blink they put their blinker on and they stop. Now I've gotta stop. Mm -hmm. If they had a turn lane and they knew how to use it, mm -hmm. not everybody knows how to use these That's things. Good. But if they know how to use it, they get in that lane and you're in you're in the the only lane that's there, but that lane continues on. Right, right. The only time you really slow down is when a person enters or a person exits to the right, but you only have to slow. You don't have to stop. Kind of, you, you kind of need jerk reactions to think that if you take two of our lanes away, it's going to be congested. But, that's right, but, but, but it doesn't but happen that yeah, way yeah, because yeah. that middle lane stops yeah. as soon yeah. as someone wants to cross the other side of the traffic. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I think one key, though, if you I, I drive up and down 114 quite a bit. Yeah. People tend to drive faster, 
Yep. And the in and out of that central lane can be a little bit more dodgy because there's definitely a lot of high speed in and out of that stuff, which always makes me nervous. People don't know how to use that lane yeah. over there. But if we had a little bit of a slower pace, I think it becomes exactly at 25 yeah, miles an hour pace. over there, and it's only 40 on 28. So okay. yeah, frequent crosswalks and things like that that naturally slow things down. Right. Too. Yes. Right. Traffic calming things. Yeah. Right. And we want to slow that traffic down a little bit too. Yeah. Otherwise, people just go right through North Reading and don't know there's anything here to stop. The other thing with Middleton is it's usually uh, big pickup trucks, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the guy that was following me in 93 to the yeah. right on my bumper. Sorry about that. It wasn't you. <laughs> so, I mean, I other, than that, other than that, I don't see any, any of the other questions here that, that uh, create. I think it's all good. They I'm, did a they did a much better job. Yeah, than I this. think I'm happier with this than I was with the other one. So yeah. I think I'd say yes. Let's go with that. Okay, I'll let her know. And, okay. and putting some pictures in there really helped. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Especially the one with the bike lane. You know, it's 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 not a real picture, but well, maybe it is. I guess it could be real somewhere. Yeah. That picture, I was wondering if it was too pretty because I don't want people to well, think that that's what we're making mainstream look like. Because probably we're not. Well, <laughs> you have, that, have, have them have them have them put a. Uh, have them put a telephone poles and well, not yeah, but you know they can put a, a declaration underneath the. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. 110, 124 Main Street. I guess there's just do we have to vote on the, to sign this, or are we all good to just go sign it? Or? You have to vote. Okay. Have your motion, Mr. Pierce. I move the Planning Commission vote to endorse the plan entitled. RECR Realty LLC 110 Main Street North Reading Mass 01864 dated February 8th 2021 last revised May 19th 2021 drawn by Civil Consultants Inc subject to the terms and conditions of the certificate of conditional approval dated June 22nd 2022 21. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Ooh. We have a motion and second by Mr. Hayden. Feature by here. Um, <laughs> I was waiting. I just went long enough. Um. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Mr. Redloff is not with us tonight. So, uh, go up and sign is... The right hand one. Those are the writing on the one. Yeah. Uh, the one on the right is writing number. Okay. There's only one sheet. That makes it easy. I can actually... What? Carry it around? I know. <laughs> 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 you almost got this. Just stay there, Debbie. Just relax. Just relax. Today was the last night that it's that this gonna that the sun will set after eight o'clock. Tomorrow is before eight o'clock. Oh, that was, uh, happens so quickly. I know we're on the way down now. Yeah, it doesn't take it's long. It's all downhill. It doesn't right? take long. It's downhill from here. Yeah. yeah. Be snowing before you know it. Hush. <laughs> Hush. I know you like that. You like that white stuff. We're putting the plows on tomorrow. <laughs> That's a little early, boy. <laughs> Don't want to be late. You may, may want to fit them and fix them, but that's all. Okay. Um, um, let's take a quick look at these ZBAs, and then I'm going to save ADUs till the end. I do. Oh, well, let, no, we can do the Atlantic. Let's do the Atlantic Plaza plan endorsement. I think we'll do that one next. So. so Chris pointed out something which I think is worth mentioning, which is that this um, these stations have graphic advertising on them. And I don't really think we noticed that or talked about it. I think that that is a sign. Go look so I think we probably, I, I think that the approval is fine. Um, but on a kind of unrelated note, I think I need to speak with the building inspector about whether these would um, require uh, sign permits. And well, whether that should, we, should we hold on this then? Um, well, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I did hear. It's a 55 inch television on the front of that thing. And I didn't see it, and the charging rate on the thing 
is 30 miles per hour. Well, well you it's know what? It's very little. Well, yeah. You know, you know what I was also, uh, you got me thinking about the um, gas stations, which have the TVs on every single point. We were talking about that in town. So they only turn on, the ones here, yeah. only turn on when you pump it. They don't run all the time. These things are going to run all the time. Yeah, Matter of fact, if you look at the specifications work. they give us, they say not to have the bollards block the vision of the TV screens. Yeah. And they just paid advertisers? Nothing to they do paid advertisers because these guys are giving them the charge know. for free. We don't know. Is yeah. it going to say Stop and Shop on it? No, it, it, no it's, it's not going to say Stop and Shop specials? It says it, it says it on here somewhere. Yeah. 56 inch media display too. I mean, that's a like a sideways big screen TV. Yeah, it's a big screen TV. It's, it's that big. Yeah. And it's we can't big. have animated signage. It's not allowed in our zoning. So. You know what? I think we're going to hold on this until we bring them in and have a little discussion with them. Okay, and I'll also speak with Jerry when he's back on vacation to, from yeah. vacation to see what signage, um, if that's considered signage or not. It was kind of, it was kind of a. Uh, well, that was a good catch. Somewhere. Getting closer and closer to Blade Runner. <laughs> to what? Yeah. Blade Runner. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Page 8 says uh, EV charges include high impact digital media screens that provide properties with branding and messaging, as well as additional revenue opportunities. Thank you. Additional revenue opportunities. <laughs> Which means they're going to have messaging on it, and it ain't going to go just for the person fueling or charging the car. I guess the idea is that you're going to be you're going to be there a while, so give them something to watch and monetize. <laughs> well, while and they can they can shut you off. They have timers on these things. Yeah. Well, one I hour, think half um, hour, one hour, two hour, and I think that's it. They expect you to go into stores. Hopefully. They don't expect people. To, you know, when there's no car in front of it, they're going to want to be showing that. Someone's going to walk by and take a look at what's on it. Yeah. yeah. Or drive by and take a look at what's on it in a parking lot. Yeah, that's more dangerous. Good. Yeah, yeah I think somehow or other, somehow or other we glossed over that. I didn't see that detail either. Uh, I just didn't because see Because they, they kind of did a bait and switch on us. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but I, I would say it's a really good catch. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, we had a little help at the last EDC meeting. Okay. Right. One of our associate members. So why don't we? Uh, so I'm going to say we're going to we're going to sit on that until we have them come back in and explain to us why they didn't tell us about that in the first place. So um, and I think when they check tomorrow to see how they did tonight, did we might get their attention. I think so. So. Um, so just to fill me in. So do we? If the background of this. So we have a general rule saying you can't have. Like what video? Yeah, style animate, yeah, animated moving, signs. Moving signs. Is that just to avoid how, like an attractive distance kind of? Well, partly, but also, you know, one of the most, one of the the biggest cause of accidents these days is distracted driving. Yeah. That, that's that's the newest and biggest thing. Everybody will tell you that. So there's no so anything that you do to encourage distraction is probably not a good thing. And we don't we we and, and aside from the fact that we don't allow it signs. In the town here, so, so, but I was a little more concerned again about the fact that they didn't say, just to let you know. By the way, we're going to put, <laughs> and we would have said, whoa, wait a minute. Um, and I think I asked about the charging rate too. Right? Yeah. It was kind of like you could, danced around. You it's could, not very um, high. Because if I remember correctly, the picture that we saw of the unit didn't have a screen on it, did it? It had a picture of what it looked like kind of Volta. It didn't have like some other picture on it. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on the second sheet on that, on those. You can see it better, I get it if you want. Yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna make them <coughs> get it and bring it to us because I think that's a good, I think that's a good point. So, um, so right. I think we ought to talk a little more about that. So uh, uh, let's do a couple of ZBAs here. And, uh, if, I, if I have a, a question first. Go ahead. Debbie, 265 Main Street, it's really 271 Main Street, is that correct? Yeah. And here it says 265. Yeah, 271, and you were told by the assessor it's actually this is 265. Okay. But that's still, start, that's still the Atlantic Plaza. So, uh, yeah, so, so Atlantic Plaza has a number of addresses in it. Is that what you're saying? They, 
I just used to go by 265-271 Main Street for okay. that whole area. So that's what I used to put down. And then I... Well, I one, would, one would automatically assume that 265 would be where... On the right. Yeah. And 271 would actually be the store. Stop and shop, and this can't yes. be. Yeah, so that it wouldn't be, um, you know, unless this, you know, I don't know how else that goes. If this has got to be cars, old, old, uh, the old car store, car the old car store, yeah, stationary store, because it's a pet food thing, and I heard that's what that's what they were losing their lease to. Yeah, well, uh, I was a little concerned on, on this one. Um, um, I was going to do the other one first, but we'll start with this one since you brought it up. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was a little concerned that there's, when they get to the part about overnight, you know, boarding. And, you um, can't cat adoption on a property. That's kind of like a pet store. Yeah, well, it, well, it also, but it, but, it, but it specifically doesn't say dogs. It only mentions cats. Mm -hmm. And yet it says pets. And so doesn't, it doesn't rule dogs out either. So, um, well, compared to the other one, because wasn't there the what the bark and roll one yeah. that you're talking about expanding? And, yeah, the two fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, and having overnight, we were talking about there's houses right behind there. Yeah. And then the overnight with dogs and kind of like that could be annoying. At least one thing for this is not there's yeah. no homes behind there. It's just golf course back there, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds more like they're going to get in they, not only the sale of pet supplies, but grooming services for animals as well as overnight well, stay. I would really want to see because... And it doesn't say what it is. It says overnight but, stay. Yeah, but, but um, <coughs> traditionally when you have a place like that, there is a yard for the dogs. So is there Cats don't a part need a of this plan that we're not seeing? Well, that could be the cat. Room. Huh? It says isolation room. So presumably they have a room within the premises where they have, you know, a bunch of crates. The mm -hmm. yeah. room. They're not like walking around out back by the dumpsters or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're limited, there is, there there is cats. no grassy area I mean, than the walk. It seems like a space plan might be helpful to see, like, okay, is there a room where the cats are going? Is well, I don't the think they, which but they didn't really limit it to cats. So they just mentioned, they purposely didn't say dogs, <laughs> the way I look at it, because cause cats don't bark. And dogs do, and they can be very loud, and, and they can be annoying to... to uh, Where cats will be held on a regular basis. I mean, but there's also the, 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 the question so of, you know, the, you know, there's going to be a certain amount... If they're going to have everything indoors, there's going to be all the feces is going to be indoors. And so there's going to be some method of disposal of those, hopefully not into the septic system. Um, but... Um, it's a lot of kitty litter. Yeah, yeah. There's not, so, so there's some Boy, level of disposal... I mean, I think there's a lot of questions here. Warren. Well, I mean, my thought was that could it be a change of use requiring a site plan review? I mean, if it's a retail store, then no. It could be a pet supply store, and that fits no. with every other use that's ever been there. Well, but if I don't know if boarding cats then kicks it into another use category. Dogs, certainly. But I just, I'm not sure about that. Um, well, they purpose, they didn't say dogs, but they didn't <coughs> exclude dogs either. No, they didn't. That's that's what I was reading that again for. Yeah. It says for a special permit to run a before. business that includes not only the sale of pet supplies but grooming services for animals, as well as overnight stay yeah, and that, cat adoption. Yeah. Does that mean they're going to be overnighting boa constrictors too? I mean, what's what's the? Uh, there's, there's no line drawn here. Well, I would imagine though that I mean grooming for dogs and cats. It's going to be largely the same thing. You're yeah. in, they're in and out. They're not yeah. overnight. Overnight, limiting it to cats is a much different thing than overnight to dogs. So you can accommodate dogs and cats grooming. But it doesn't specify cats for overnight. It specifies animals. I think that's their intent. Though. It's probably well, no, they've been pretty specific on the way they worded this. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. concerned on that non-specific. Yeah, specificity. Yeah. Somebody help me with that word. Specificity. You're good. You, you have the it. Adoption so part. Yeah. <laughs> the only mention of cat is for the adoption. I mean, selling dogs out of a dog store is, is out of a pet store is like something completely different, and I'm glad to see that they're not doing that. Mm -hmm. I, 
I mean, cat adoption is very different from other, it's not like a, you know, a puppy mill kind of, a, I mean, that would concern me a lot. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, but then, but in order to, in yeah, order I to, I mean, one would, one would assume that in order for them to have a cat there for somebody to adopt, they would have to have a cat there for some period of time. Yeah, that's right. They've got to be living there. Yeah. Well, not necessarily, though, because places like PetSmart, one thing that they do is that they basically, they team up with adoption centers who will bring right. them in basically for a limited period, try to get some exposure, and then they go back to the yeah. kennel. So with cats, it's, there's plenty of them out there, so you don't have that puppy mail issue, but they do team yeah. up with other places to temporarily. Yeah, I can see how they would do that, but but still, I mean, we're not the ones got to make a decision on this. But I think we should we should say that we have a lot. There are a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. There are a lot, a lot of questions lot of about, 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 about and I would say uh, dogs overnight as well. Um, you know, what's the you know? Yeah, the, the the hearing notice is very nebulous. What's the sanitary you know uh, arrangements? Because I think that's a, a good question. They I mean, can't be putting that down their septic system there. Well, well, that's not even that. It's, it's more along the line of, you, you know, I, I'm sure that to some extent it's manageable, but if you have a bunch of animals in there and they're all, you know, urinating, defecating in there, there's the smell that comes along. You're going to somebody's house well, that's had they three or four well cats for a long time. You know, you, you know they have cats as soon as you walk in the door. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I'm just, you know, I don't know that that's all been considered. So, or that you want to make sure they consider it. Yeah, yeah. So we want them to, you know, be a, you know. A if their hygiene is good, it's not a problem. I didn't. I'm sure it's easy in the very beginning. Cats are the owners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the owners of the business and the cats. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I, 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 I know I that at, at, at the beginning it's probably not too hard, but after a while, things get sloppy, and then you're not fully. Have steel it's cages. It's not a big deal. Yeah. You can clean them. Yeah, and of course, and, and again, years. again, if they're going to be doing grooming, like giving them baths and everything, there's going to have to be some level of control over what goes down the pipes, because mm -hmm. that can kill the system in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, that'd be hairy. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> you'd almost have to have a, a separate, similar to a similar to a uh, hair salon, that has a separate tank for the color and all that, those things. Yeah, it could be a catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Cute. Anyway, <laughs> well, they do. They do use nasty stuff to kill the bees. Anyway, animals. just you know, I think you get the picture. Okay, we have a lot of questions. Yeah, we okay. have a lot of questions about how this would all work and how this is, and they should look at it very closely. So, um, okay, twenty-five Westwood Circle. I don't really have too many issues with this one. Photographer, uh, cause but I'm not sure what a three D photographer is. Well, yeah, he takes a lot of pictures and then puts them together to make a 3D image. And yeah. problem it's is, he's working, tour, yeah, if you will. he's working for realtors, and you know, suddenly he's got this nice office in his home, and suddenly it's like, yeah, I don't want to feel like going over to you. Come here. I'm, I'm concerned about the well, clients I think that, coming that, to the that house. Would, that would be that would be the board of appeals to enforce. Well, that's true. To enforce the, the limitations that we have in the bylaw. So it's all electronic, though. So I think it's probably more. Yeah, email you would, or you would think. Than, you would yeah. think. Now, I didn't. I if you change this, and stuff, it's not. They got to be there. I didn't have any real issues with this one because it seems to be pretty much the right kind of thing to have a home occupation. This was in photography. So well, let me see. We got anything written in the small time? Anybody feel any different about that? Thing? I would you like know? to. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, f fault that, so. All right, uh, ADUs. So, one of the things I learned in reading through all this, something I didn't know, and the state of Massachusetts has an ADU recommendation law of some kind. Yeah, I think there's a model bylaw. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that the state had a, by a model bylaw. Why didn't we look at that? Well, I mean, I can see what MAPC has. Usually they're the ones who produce those things. Um, yeah, I mean, we can. I, I thought that also the study that Needham did was interesting because they looked at yes, similar I, suburbs. Yes, I, I actually, yeah, I actually enjoyed study. reading this for the research that they did. I think they did a good job. I think they looked at everything and they answered they answered a lot of questions that, I, that we've had and that I know that I've had. They managed to answer a bunch of them. Um, for example, the... the um, requirement of having it be a family member or something. They addressed that quite thoroughly. 
as far as you know what they what they thought that that was not something that you should do. You should not do that. You should uh, you know because by doing that you begin to you know change the whole character of the law. Not what you want to do. And you also discourage people. And of course there there there's all the usual stuff in there about if you make a reasonable law that you'll you, that you'll be able to apply it to the illegal ones and bring them up to code. Right. And, and they'll be willing to do it because they know they'll be legal after that. So there's a lot of positives in, in, in what that research that they did to help, um, you know, make, you know, legitimize some of what's already been done and to, and to make it safer and, you know, so forth and so on. So <clears throat> they do, they also do, do, do encourage, um, an ADU that's in a separate building. So, um, again, I, I know we talked a little bit about whether or not we thought that was a, a good idea, but but um, um, but then also the recommendations for you know no real restrictions on one that's inside an existing dwelling, and that one of the members that live there has to be a homeowner, be the homeowner. They, they they hit a lot of the spots. It was all pretty good. So. But, but, but I also recognize a lot of what we had talked about already. They, they, when they covered it, they came up with the same answers that we did. So, so where do we want to go with this? Is, um, anybody else have any, read, did you read through that? Any comments on what we read out of that? Or I just tried to hit some high spots on it. Yeah, I didn't have anything to add to that one. Yeah. No, I mean, looking through them, I mean, especially the writing one, I mean, it seemed all appropriate. Yeah, I mean, nothing really stood out as overly restrictive. And, and well, the rating one, I, I, you know, I, you know, the rating one is, uh, is, is, is certainly well, they, well, they, they, it's really a different town in many ways, and the way it's built, and the way it's constructed, and the, the lot sizes, and everything is, the majority of Reading is, is, not like the majority of North Reading. Yeah. The best way to put it. A lot of the development that we've done in the last 25 or 30 years um, has definitely been on a minimum of a one-acre lot, and in the case of uh, up by McIntyre, all these big three-acre lots, you know, that's, you know, in Reading, they'd have put 12 houses on that. <laughs> so, so, I mean, and, 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 and with this ADU, Reading ADU law, they could take, if you had a house like that, you have all that room, you could do all kinds of things. <laughs> So, um, so we really we're really a different town. So I, we so while there's some good, a lot of good meat in that in town of Reading one. I like what Needham did. I think a little bit better. I think so. That, I think there's a little. There was a lot more attention to detail in it, and a lot more answers to questions. They they researched those questions out pretty good. So if I may, Mr. Pierce, yes, please. Uh, they included this. Uh, key for the requirements for ADU bylaws yep. for the eight towns that they were looking at. Um, in every one of those towns, it's a special permit to have an, ex an external building yeah, for yeah. a separate building. Yeah, so yeah, they, they, put, they put more control, they put more controls on it. No, Reading, um, Reading, everything, in Reading it's special permit it's too. special permit too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that wasn't much Or if you're going to enlarge a building, most of them said special permit. I was not surprised to see that, uh, and, and I think that makes a lot of sense. That you can, um, I mean, part of the question was, you know, that I was uh, I was looking for an answer to is, can you like just build an ADU, you know, you know, not a garage that where you convert the top of it over, but just say I'm just, I'm just going to build an ADU right over there. <laughs> well, if, if you make it handicapped accessible, they would really like that, yeah. which would be good. You know, that's all first floor. And somebody actually uh, requires that on the attached units, or maybe it's on the detached units. The first floor has to be AD, uh, has to be uh, handicapped accessible. Handicapped accessible. Yeah. Yeah, I think Needham did a good job, and you can almost. No, they did a great job. I think we can. I think if we were going to copy a bylaw, I'd lean towards that one more than Reddings. Though, was a bylaw idea? The bylaw was not in not this. this document. No, 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 it wasn't. What I'd it was, like to see their bylaw. But, yeah. Well, that well, would be, that would be yeah. wonderful because, yeah. along with all this information, they must have. They you, used you're gonna, if you read through all the everything they did and saw what they did, what what their conclusions were, you know what their bylaw says. So, <laughs> when, but when they put, when they put this out, they didn't have a bylaw because it's not even on this chart. Well, they were still studying it, and then on their website, they also have a pretty interesting ad 
advocacy piece, talking about all the you know the pros of you know doing something like this and what the need was. And yeah, yeah, I, I, I thought that, that was, well, I mean that was what you would expect. It's a yeah. to keep elder people in the, and fa keep families together, to keep elder yeah. people in their homes. You know, it would um, you know there's, there's a, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of stuff in there. So, so I think the big having adding an ADU onto an existing house probably uh, is, is the same everywhere, and I don't think we have a lot of discussion about that unless somebody does. Adding it on or adding it no, in? No, no, putting it inside an existing inside. property. Um, but if you I don't think this unless does anybody have any issues with that? Any comments on that? No. no. So I so I think the, con the the issues come when we start building a building purposely. When we go into McIntyre and somebody puts a building in their backyard as an ADU. Or makes a building into an ADU. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, if there's already a big garage. garage there with an overhead that you could do, you know, to convert over, that's what Jerry runs into. So, right. I mean, so it's, right. I know that's done and that's not... It's not what we want to be able to deal what with. What that doesn't do, it doesn't change the character of the neighborhood. There's no change in the number of buildings in the neighborhood. Right. Other than... There's a door on that that upstairs garage for whatever for whatever. So the real issue comes is when somebody comes in and digs a hole in their backyard and builds a brand new building up here to be an ADU. Now, now you've you've uh, changed that into a, a two-family uh, property or whatever you want to call it. That's where the that's where the rub comes, because that would be construed as damaging the value of the property. So in the beginning, when we first started talking about these, we talked about picking an area in town and setting up a zone or something for it. But I don't think you can do that. I don't think we can do that. I think we, we I think whatever you make for a bylaw has to be applicable to the entire community. I don't think most towns have done that. I think that most of them have um, made it blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Well Sud yeah. Sudbury does say that you can't have uh, have to have only can have so many occupants in the detached units. Oh yeah, and you have and, to. And, and, well, it has and, all that things. Right? All yeah. has have to have a parking like spot for each one. Yep. I mean, you know, all that, all that. Yep. But that's all. That's that minutia. That's in all of them. They all do, have done the same Something, thing yeah. in that. The big, the big question is, can they build one in their backyard? Yeah, that's detached. The detached ones, yeah. That's that's, so that's that, the big question. That's the big question right. for us, really. Right. I mean, a lot of the rest of it is is. Um, is is uh, is not too big of a deal. It's it's uh, legitimizing what's already there. It was really a good move, you know, and so forth. But what would be the distinction between that and basically just not subdividing and building two properties on the same piece of land? The size restriction is that the only distinction we have between stopping you from building a detached ADU and not really considering basically just building a second home on your property. Well, basically, that's what you're that's doing, what building a second right. home. Yeah, if you're building a second home, where well, right now you cannot build a second home on your property in, in this town. Right. So, but so, if you call it an ADU, the only yeah, difference between yeah, yeah. the two is the size restriction. Remember, yes. Am I wrong? Oh, yeah, 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 you get, yeah, yeah. But I, you, you already know what will happen is they'll end up at the Board of Appeals and say, well, you know, it might this handicap, they need bigger, bigger rooms, wider hallways, this, that, 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 can we build a bigger building and then... Once the door is kicked open, you kick the door open. That'll be the end of it. Yeah. So I, I'm just, I'm just wondering if the, if it makes sense for us to <clears throat> look at detached properties as e as being an existing detached property that can be converted, and how we differentiate that from somebody putting a shed in their backyard and then turning it into an ADU. <laughs> you know what I mean? How do we how do we uh, arrive? You could have a garage, and then two years later, someone comes back and says they want to fit in. But if the garage is existing, again, that right. that would be an existing structure. If they built that existing structure with an ADU as part of it, uh, you know, if the primary use of it is a garage and the ADU is the upstairs of it, I, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how you differentiate between that and somebody just building a, quote, second home on the property. Right. Yeah. Well, well, there's got to be a way. I mean, the square footage is one thing. I mean, if you if you limited the square footage so that because one of the things about the cost of uh, building is it costs almost as much to build a small house as it does to build a little bit bigger house. If you know what I mean. There's no efficiency. Yeah. There's, yeah. Yeah. So there's so it's, it's not 
cost effective to build something. Cost per square foot wise. Yes, for, for something yeah. small, uh, if we have a size limitation, they're not going to want to build that. that that's going to be self inhibited. So, um, but if you had, um, but if there's an existing garage, you know, that's, that's a big, a two car garage, that's enough floor space to put something in the second story, you know. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I don't know. I'm just, what I picked up out of it. Well, what's the, what's the sub zone? Even if you take it back one step further back, if you build a garage with the space above it, what's to stop you from infilling your garage doors after the fact of just having a two story? Not this. You never know. Yeah. Like people do that with attached ADUs all the time, fill yeah. the garage door, put yeah. a door in, and yeah. use the garage as living space. Mm -hmm. To stop that either. I don't know. Maybe the, the economic hurdle of doing it is what prevents the majority you, of people. Well, doing well, if somebody person. comes in to build a garage I, that you're pretty sure they're going to put an ADU in, do you have a deed? Do you deed restrict it? Isn't that what Jerry tried to do? That's what he does. Yeah, because there's no bylaw that allows for ADUs, so he has to. Make so sure if we had a bylaw, but 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 for detached EDU, if you build a new building. You know that it can't that it can't that you can't turn it into an if you know you did restrict it you can't turn it into an ADU um, as a matter of right. I mean you'd have to it have to be existing or inside. The, I'm just trying to figure out how because you know that the, the issue is going to come from you know again because this town is totally different than than even Reading or Needham but closer to Needham actually. I mean, not every town allows detached ADUs at all. Yeah. And those that do, I pretty much all require a special permit for them. Right. It, I know. I mean, so do we just right, not allow detached ADUs? Is that it? I mean, that's that's a. I can tell you, there's a couple of places. I mean, there's a couple of places in town where this, you know, where they just, you know, turn a pool house into. <laughs> into a complete. Second home. It's yeah. not hard either. They got plumbing in there now. Yeah. Because they already put plumbing in it. Yeah. And there's probably heat in it too. Yeah. Yeah. So you could, uh, you know, you know, all you, you got to do is. So you wouldn't have to go in the house to use the bathroom or wouldn't have to right. go in the house to take a shower. So right. all that stuff was in the pool house. So. That's right. Is there a kitchen? Well, yeah. that's oh, yeah, a, lot, and a lot of those places have yeah. like a galley kitchen. Absolutely. That's right. It doesn't it's take much to kitchen. turn them over. Yeah. Honest to goodness, it's crazy. You gotta be, you have them cut in the right ones. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of those out there, and I mean, you know, obviously at one point when there was a, a break in the continuation of the bylaw, there was a bunch of them that got done legally, but then as soon as the bylaw got reinstated, that put a stop to it. But um, but we still have some out there that are quote legal. So um, you know. So you know, some of these, I think I read, some of them can do, do an existing structure if it's been built for five or more years. Yeah. So it's not like you go out there, you build a new house, you build a two-car garage, it's attached. Yeah. And then it's after you move in, you go and you, you do your ADU upstairs. Hide your time. Yeah. You know, you have to have it for a long time. It's got to be utilized as a garage. And having oh. parking People that are a good planner to say, you know, in five years my parents will be this old, and you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, but but again, if it fits within the bylaw, if yeah. it does the job, if it prevents, it may help. It may help. I mean, you know, you're yeah. not going to. You, you can't stop everybody. Right now, we got them going in illegally, yeah. and Jerry can't even can't specify what the the the, the uh, walls are. Here he can. Yeah. You know. Yes, yeah, Vincenzo. I just have a question. How? How is this different than being able to finish a basement? And we know people do all kinds of fun stuff without even using the second, right? You put it up. You could turn in like the basement to an entire the floor. So how? I've seen that many, many times. So what? So my my point is that if if someone wants to do it, it seems like they're going to do it, right? Whether or not something's yeah. on the book. Yeah. And you could easily buy a house where it has a finished or unfinished basement and. You know, I didn't even think of what you said. Like, I have an, uh, an attached garage, but yeah, theoretically, somebody could knock on the wall and just turn that into part of the basement. I didn't even think it'd be. Yeah, I mean, do it all the time. 
Okay, I didn't know that that was actually a thing. <coughs> it is a thing. Okay. Going to these 50s houses, and a lot of them, if the if the basements are dry and the garages are dry, they're living in it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen plenty of houses where you you <coughs> go in and and um, to to you know for you know to do some job and. And then you have to go down into the basement. You go down there, and there's the grandmother down there with a full kitchen. Yeah. You know, making some of the best smelling stuff you ever had. Yeah. But they <laughs> may not. They may not be another door. They may not have a door and the stairs going up. And I don't mind but that. I'm not the building inspector. So right. Right. But I that kind of thing I don't mind. Looking for that. But uh, but know? the fact. My point is that it's a completely finished yeah. situation. You know, you could take the whole top of the house off, and you could still live down there, and missing nothing. Yeah. So so so. Like the walkout sliders. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I mean. So I mean. You know, so I think it's easy to put a key there, right? It can all be done. So it's easy. So so it's, it's being done, and 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 you know, and, and and done very nicely in some cases, but it's the um, the, the the proper egress in the case of an uh, and, that, and that's what you're talking about. Right. Proper so egress. If we, proper if we, but that's inside the house, Vincenzo. So we have no issue with them turning one in inside the house. We want to encourage them, though, to pull permits and and, and take care of a Do couple of the safety items, where there's two two exits, you know, and you know for safety and and um, you know and, and fireproofing in the right places and and so forth and so on. Those are the things that would be. Those are the things that would be con of, of concern. Like they build a garage and they don't care about the second story. But if you haven't put fire code on the ceiling, two hours double layer, then you know. Then whatever you put upstairs, if anything happens in the garage, those people are gone. It's just like that. But it's not necessary for garage. But if you're going to have people live upstairs, it's necessary now. Yeah. So if 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 it was something that um, it was going to be allowed, then the building inspector would say, "Okay, that's fine. You can do this, but you got to double coat this with fire code, and you got to do this and that. And then you can go ahead and do it, and, and they'll do it if they think that it, you know, if they can do it with a permit and do it legally." What about tying that second floor construction to septic? It's well, that's that, that's another to that's another to yeah. See, see that? Well, that's another whole issue. Yeah. That is. If you yeah, have a four bedroom home or a four bedroom septic system and then oh, you put an ADU goes. in, now you got a five bedroom location. So right. what now what? Technically technically that requires an upgrade of the system. Right. So can you marry the two to Well, to I help mean I, I think, to be doing I think that you would I think the Board of Health could uh, the well the Board of Health should always be on any one of these applications for them to take a look and sign off. Yeah. Or if you're not. building a two story garage with right. future use in mind, putting right. a second layer of drywall, right. yeah. basically saying we're going to occupy it someday. Yeah. Like it either has to be a deed restriction yeah. to exclude it from ever having a restroom and a bedroom. But there's, or there's, but there's so much. I mean, this is one house that I was at not, not too long ago, there was this. If I said, you know, how many bedroom homes is this? They said five. So I, when I go downtown, pull all the paperwork on it. It's a three bedroom design. <laughs> and that's it. And it's a five bedroom home. Bonus. Yeah. yeah. Two bonus rooms. <laughs> it, so I mean, I think in one of these things they were talking about you can have no more people living on the whole property that was living in the main house. Yeah. So like if you have, you know, you you three kids and you're married, that's five people. Your kids go off to college and they go, they leave, and then you bring the grandparents in. Well, that's four people. That's okay. That's yeah. legal for them. Yeah. But you can't bring two sets of grandparents in because now you get six. Yeah. Doesn't do you any good the next generation of ownership though. Yeah. Really resets. So I mean, I don't think what, we're not, we're <laughs> right. not, I, I don't think our job here is to determine um, to make determinations for the board of health. No. Because that that's an issue that the building inspector and the board of health will deal with when somebody wants to do this, you know. But if you take a but but the reason why it's okay in an existing home is because theoretically. If you separate an area off with a bedroom, um, you you haven't probably changed the total number of bedrooms right. in the house. So no, no, I agree. So I, I'm not. I, I would let I would let the I would let the system take care of that. Yeah. You know, our job I think is to come up with a bylaw that allows in in whatever way uh, that we think is best for the town the actual development of ADUs and um, and in the in our in our. Uh, challenge here is to decide whether or not um, I, we we want to have we want to allow detached. Yeah. 
that's the hardest part. I wonder if that's a question we should tackle when we start to have, I mean, I think we should have something, you know, maybe a little bit more widely advertised where we invite people to come give input on a draft bylaw yeah. before we even get to the public hearing. Yeah. So, so who, who, well, I don't, we're not going to put ADUs on this fall anyway. No. We're going to, maybe next year. Mm -hmm. So, so what we would want to, I mean, I, 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 I would be interested in public input, but I think we probably already know what they're going to say. So, really, I think who we need to—I well. think who we need to come in first is, you know, building health, you know, all of our all of our professionals in this building, and say, okay, you know, this is what we're thinking. Tell us what you see as problems, and and help us try to solve them but, so that we can put something together. But you could also that you're okay with, and then we can present it to the public and let them comment on it make changes if we think so. I wonder if that sort of discussion would be good for us to have at a development team meeting. We do them every month. Um, yeah. I mean, it's during the day, but I, it, I think it was going to be awfully hard to get all, all those people to come to Yeah, because they're all um, well, That's okay. I don't care if it's a development team meeting. I mean, uh, that I mean, would be a great opportunity to ask yeah. them. Yeah, it gets all first. those people in the we same need room to, We need to let them know ahead of time that we're going to be bringing that. That's a, you know, planning Special for that problem. meeting is, uh, is need, will need to include the fact that there's going to be a discussion on this and we need them to bring all of their concerns and to um, to the table on that particular time so that we can figure out, so we can decide what the best way to handle it is. But you know the other thing we could do, Warren, is you know, you get the, the select board, you got the finance committee, and you got conservation, you know, the, all these other committees that we deal with or don't deal with, um, and invite them to a joint meeting to discuss it with them. Because now you're getting a cross, more of a cross section of the town. Well, like finance committee probably things. finance committee's probably good, which was is you know probably doesn't have a big issue with it. Um, but they might come. They well, might well, because there's, there's a couple of things that finance committee could be concerned about, and one of them is that if you do this in the neighborhood, it could do you devalue in the neighborhood? Does suddenly the house that's a million four go down to a million two, and now we've lost tax dollars? You know, and the other question would be on the other side is. Well, if, if, if we put an ADU in this building, have we now increased the value of this building to the point where we get more tax dollars? Okay. So, I mean, that is a, so there the, could be a conundrum there. Right. Well, that's a good reason to have them come in and talk, yeah. talk, talk about it. But the yeah. select board, um, you know, you want to get all these people on. on, on I mean, there's on a real board. estate issue here, too, right? Don't you, do you, do you, Vincenzo, do you, what do you think about? Um, so, what people see that have come into the town especially the last decade. I don't think the majority of those is cost this bridge yet because parents are not at that age. Mm -hmm. So it's a hard thing. Like I'm just talking, you know, so, right. but it could work either way. Yeah. I mean, if these dwellings are used as a secondary type of, you know, I mean, an ADU can be anything. Like it can be a, you know, I want to host a poker game. My wife won't let me smoke cigars in the house. So I got to go do it in my enclosed shed. I'm just you know throwing yeah. something out there so I think it all depends on it all depends on how those that show up and hear about it in my opinion view how it's going to affect everything in general community wise right well, that's you know? what I think so that, that's what I think the big thing is it something where parents are one thing right I mean who wouldn't rather provide for their parents and that's great like you that's a great influence I think and getting mm -hmm. you know Get, getting somebody who's older in the community just provides more everything. That's a great thing. But does it become where now I find a way where it becomes the an extra way to make a thousand dollars a month for an intern who can't stay at the dorms at BU and he doesn't want to go back to Europe? Well, one of the one of the things that they said in the Needham study was that it allowed older people to stay in their home by being able to rent out a, a section of their home for additional income in order for them to stay in their home. That's one of the points they made in the need of money. So, um, so I, th and, but the other thing that occurs to me is that if we limited it to existing building, in other words, an ADU inside an existing home, the option is if, if everybody moves out and goes away, to turn it back into a single family home because it, that's what it was originally. So there's an option to return it to its original state um, which the ADU only stays with the holder once I sell, the ADU goes away? Or, the, or, or well, no, I, I no, wouldn't make a bylaw, but I, I'm just saying that it's possible 
So if somebody says, yeah, I really like the house, but I don't want that EDU, and they say, well, how much is it going to cost to just to put it back the way it was? <laughs> well, okay, we're just going to put it back the way it was because we don't want, we don't want that additional. I mean, that's the value of, of the options that are available to you when you work within an existing structure as opposed to a detached structure. I think the way it will be seen economically is whether or not it affects quality of life. Yeah. Because I know for a fact that North Reading is attractive because it is not a renter's community. That's just a fact. Yes, I, I know that. I say it out loud, but I will. <laughs> no, I, so, I, I, I think I'm saying that in little different words. Yeah, so. <laughs> but I'll do, so I think that if, if all of a sudden real estate agents start thinking that they need to start disclosing that, hey, there might be a lot of hidden renters, that's going to become a problem. Yeah. Well, one of the things about putting a law together is you eliminate the hidden part, hopefully. Or as much of the hidden part as you can. Some of it. Yeah. And it becomes a. a we also make it safer too. Yeah. Yeah. What in, the, in their surveys that they, that Needham did, somebody said that the only time we hear about a ADU when they were illegal was when there's a fire. Mm. Yeah. Because because, because they're illegal, they were not wired properly, and there's a fire. Yeah, so again, that, that Needham law is pretty good, but, um, but I, I think we might want to look at um, how we approach detached properties, so. Well, we can do uh, just to be old. What do, you, what do you guys think? What do you, how do you feel about this, the detached property thing? <clears throat> I, I think what you said before uh, is important to get the feedback from internal town professionals. Yeah, I think they might have. They have. I thought the building inspector had great ideas with regards to the problems he's encountered in town, and had some yeah. creative solutions and kind of pointed us in a good direction. I think it'd be interesting to hear what the board of health had to say about that. I think there's some yeah. some ways to just kind of tie some other elements of the approval process for these yeah. things. I mean, if we are going to allow them, I think there's ways to ensure that they're done correctly and done safely. Yeah, and done in a way that does add value, not detract value, that doesn't hurt other members of town, that's which is beneficial which is special, for all, right? Special permit. How do you feel right. about attached versus detached? Well, I don't think there's much you can do about the attached versions, right? So well, no, I mean, I think, really that's, I think that's, I think that's, all, all of the bylaws, right? everybody, everybody is really fine with, with what's attached. inside the existing structure. If yeah, right. detached, if I only, I mean, I see the, the the apartment over the garage. If you can afford to do it and, and you want to go that route, I mean, as long as there's off street parking and it's done correctly and safely in a way that the town knows it's there and mm -hmm. you know septic systems work, you're tying all those things together the right way. Yeah. I.e., you're going forward for a permit and you're expressly saying what you want to do, yeah. as opposed to what's happens so now. So we would do things like limit the number of people, switch. make sure there's a parking spot, and then approval from. The, the building inspector and what health, whatever. Yeah, and I think to build it, if you're gonna put a second story on it, you, you, the assumption has to be that it could be occupied some way. Right, right. And somehow either, you know, somehow tie the build out of that to an eventual septic review or, or something along those lines where you can't just do the end around and be like, oh, I'm just framing it out, it's just gonna be storage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then six months later, you're building it out and yeah. you skip the whole septic issue. And, and, and the fire you, danger you know, thing, the, 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 the garage has gotta be, if you're going to park a car underneath there, I can't tell you how many cars burn up on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. and you see it all the time. So Electric what, vehicles now. Yeah, what what, what, what happened if it was sitting in your, you know, somebody left their uh, skateboard or whatever it is in there or whatever, and it, with the lithium battery in it, and it decided to blow up in the <laughs> night, well, you know, well, that's, that's without, why a two fi without that fire rating, you know, whoever's upstairs is gone, so. Right. That's so, why Jeremiah, we what do you think about detached? Uh, I'm not against them, but as a rule, I think that as long as we have, uh, you know, rules and regulations in place to account for all of these potential issues, I don't think it should be, you know, a prohibitive outright. Just a lot of hoops that need to be jumped through, and if you jump through them, sure. But I don't think that. Uh, I think there's a place for them. I mean, I can know that, like, I have a neighbor who has a terrific detached ADU, and every time we walk the dog by, my wife and I are like. God, we wish we had that for the in-laws, for, yeah. for our parents when they come over. And I do think that like multi-generational living arrangements are going to become more common. And to be honest with you, like as a re recent you know property buyer in town, we're, you know we're sitting on a big lot. Um, 
you know, if, if I wasn't able to have that option, I'd probably look at a different town. You know, if I, if I was going to, we made a significant commitment to the, you know, the property we bought. And, and you know, if, if, we, if things like that were completely precluded, I'd look to another town where regulations, sure, hoops to jump through, sure, but, you know, it, it's an option if we can pull it off. Okay, that's interesting. Good. I think it's a good point. I don't think if the proper regulations properly enforced, I don't think are a deterrent for the person who really wants it and has yeah, the potential. For the legal right? ones, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. So I don't well, think so, so, the legal so maybe, ones are going to continue maybe, to do it. Maybe part of what part of what we need to do is, and, and one of the one of the uh, things that we there is in the Reading bylaw that I didn't see in the Needham law was the uh, or, or Needham, we don't have the Needham law, but like the Needham recommendations are the things they did. I didn't see them specify setbacks off the property lines. Did you see that in there? I didn't see that. I didn't see it. Um, so, so I, so I think that I think that one of the ways we could control some of that is with, is with setbacks. Mm, if we brilliant. had, if we had setbacks, so that you couldn't build right on that. So, if you're going to build, if you're going to build any, see the thing with the garage is you can go close to the lot line with the garage. It's, 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 it's a different setback. It's an accessory structure, garage. right? Yeah. If you're going to, so if you're going to put an the unit, then you may have to have a a bigger setback. Yeah. And that could be triggered by height, right? Yeah, and so if you have an existing garage and it doesn't meet the setback, you could not, may not be able to Add convert that. Yeah, I think that's good yeah. idea. Yeah, so maybe setbacks. Then setbacks we might want to make it have always been What we can important. use setback if we're going to allow uh, detached that we that we have adequate setbacks to uh, to help control because because a lot of these are very large houses and these very expensive houses which are not going to want to see. Neighbors put an EDU in their front yard or their backyard mm -hmm. in order to pick up an extra, a little extra money because they they're out of work. You know what I mean? You know, if if there was proper setbacks, we could only allow it to happen where it would be hidden or where it would be um, uh, not not so much hidden, but not affecting the character of the neighborhood. Okay. Then Mr. Rumlow had a case study similar where where it was approved as a garage so it had a minimum setback and then immediately went on to finish the second floor and became an issue so right and, and it wasn't that. fire rated but, so, and or sound rated right but if the height alone triggered an additional setback because it had potential to be an adu you could head that off at the pass yeah yeah well i think it's in the north reading one where it's you know it always has to be that's behind the, the front of the house, house. yeah. So yeah. Um, it's always going to be, you know, secondary to the the primary front. Which yeah, they, they, yeah. They, what they want in the Reading one, what they want to do is they want a separate doorway, and they want it to be clear that it's not the main entrance, yeah. mm -hmm. so that you can determine so it doesn't look like there's two main entrances. Yeah, they don't see two houses, right? Yeah, because because yeah because that that in in, in and again in some of the more expensive neighborhoods that would connotate. Uh, a um, a two family home and and that's and that would bring that value down and the neighborhood value down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, we we got some of this out. I don't know how much more we want to. I think we need. I think we need uh, to. Um, I think we need to have a in, in the fits of development team meeting. That that's fine. Uh, but I but I think we need to before we go any further is sit down and, and get some input from all of the uh, other departments in town. And then and log that input, and then and then uh, and then try to develop uh, a conceptual law, and and then maybe have some hearings on it. That would be the that would be the plan, I think, to, to move this along. What are the what are the concerns? And this is invisible from the street. Yeah, yeah. Invisible from the street, just what we're talking about. You right. Don't, you right. don't want to see that. Well, you can make it invisible. Worst, yeah. You can usually make on a big lot. You can make it invisible from the street by keeping it in the backyard. But the but the house may lose its pool. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to take the pool out. Or the or they get a they get another three car garage. Yeah. And it looks like a three car garage, but it's not. Well. You know. A garage on both sides of the house. Mm. Uh, no. Go up on Shasta, you'll find it all over the place, and they actually use them as garages. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, nice ones. They, yeah. yeah, they use them as garages. Yeah. Well, I think so. I think we need to. Um, 
I think we need to get some input from our from our different uh, yeah, I think we'll different different departments here, and then and then and then uh, and then to, as I said, develop some kind of a conceptual law that we can then present to people and get some input from them. And I think at that point we can refine it to uh, to something that we can bring to town meeting. So. Yeah, getting that needle law would be good too. Okay. Yeah, and I would like to see how they what that final needle law came out as. Because that's a new one. Yeah. It's really new. And, and all was, these I other ones. They did, I thought they did a great job on the research they did. they did. It was it was good. It, it really was, did. It was, I mean, it was very interesting reading right through yeah. right through the whole thing. Yeah. So. I mean, so they went from what forty eight hundred people to. 80,000 people? Yeah. Which is Newton. Wow. Yeah. Carlisle to Newton. That's what they got in here. So, yeah, well, I mean, Bedford, they did a really Bedford's good job. Bedford's the closest job. to us or something, was it? Uh, Bedford is pretty close to us, 13,000. Yeah. 13, That's what I remembered, yeah. Uh, Westwood is close to us, almost, almost us, is 14,6. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's really close to us. Yeah. Sudbury so, is 17,6. So, yeah. They're all, they're all right there. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody final comments on that? You all good? I think we. I think that's a that action. That's the action we need to take right now. So we can start putting together what we want to do. So. I can tell you what our next development team meeting is. Um, uh, September. It's the first week of September. It's actually Wednesday, September first, <coughs> at nine o'clock. And I was doing them over Zoom. And I can continue to do them over Zoom, although now we have department head meetings right after that, no longer over Zoom. So <laughs> is, is 9 o'clock on a Wednesday morning the kind of time that anyone would reasonably be able to participate in, or should we try to figure something else out? I mean, I know you're all working, and yeah. it's not the easiest time. It's not like, well, I mean, I guess it's a half day for me anyway, so. Yeah, I could, probably, I could probably work that out. I mean, I... We could have it where you know you and I attend to get yeah. their feedback if that's yeah. what everyone wants to do, or if we really want well, to. Well, actually, do it. we're not going to be presenting anything. We're going to be collecting. Yeah, yeah. So, so I we're just going to want to hear from them. Uh, we're not. It's not like we all have to go and give our opinion. Yeah. All I want, we just want to collect everything and then pass it out to everybody. Just and say this just is be what they said. Yes. Yeah. I mean. And then and then and then and then we can sit down and talk about what how they're. How their their concerns fit into a bylaw that we might want to produce. Right. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, can, that'd be okay, Danielle. I can we can do that. Okay. Their concerns may be our concerns too. So. Yeah. And the yeah. building is we we kind of we kind of know what the building inspector's concerns are. Yeah, to a point, but um, you know, but I well, think we don't know what the health health is and, yeah. and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I, actually, I got to talk to him in the next couple of days anyway. So maybe I'll give him a heads up. Okay, he's on vacation this week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bob. He gave me a task I that I have to complete for him. So. Oh. You said he did say the building inspector, oh. but it might oh, be Bob sorry. too. You talking about oh, Bob? I'm talking about Bob. Oh, Bob. Okay. Well, yeah. Bob's here, I right think. Yeah. 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 Give him a chance to do it. Yeah. You get out. You when you see him, you can fill his ear with it. Yeah. And he can stew on it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know he will. Well, he'll talk to Jerry too. That's the thing. Yeah. You know? So the two of them. So by the time we, we have that meeting, they'll have developed some kind of a idea of what they want to see or what they think they're going to need. So, okay, uh, planning administrator updates. Well, um, the last time we were here, uh, we talked a little bit about preparing presentation um, for the select board to discuss um, Main Street, and, and since that time, Warren and I met again and spoke a bit and we kind of talked about um, how maybe what we should do is maybe I draft something very basic and then at our next CPC meeting we just all all contribute to figuring out how that presentation goes and we sort of started to talk about maybe the direction of that presentation is more here's the work done to date we're going to present it this is what's been done this is, these are the findings but we would hold off as of yet doing any sort of, um, you know, push for a particular outcome. Yeah. But then that would maybe follow at a, at, a, at a later date, but that really what we're kind of, what the need is right now maybe is to just make the board aware of what the work has entailed and what we have found so yeah. far. And what, what remains still outstanding um, 
th this isn't what we had hoped to get, end up with from Abacus, but it is the best we can. We're gonna, I think, we're gonna get. So, so the comment that I made was um, that we really need to make sure that in the initially we address the um, the precept that we were handed in the beginning, and that is what uh, if we if we put a package treat is is it feasible to put a package treatment plant in and, and then actually build something so that that was what we were uh, was supposed to so we need to be able so initially kind of address the fact that you know yeah, yeah we did that and and uh and with the help of advocates these we have some conceptual ideas because we want to keep this because this is not a plan this is a concept so um, um because Right now, if we, we need to put something together that uh, we can get some consensus on. And, I, and, and if it's just a concept and we get consensus on a concept, then it gives us the opportunity to move forward. So we want to keep it basically on the conceptual basis. With, you know, and I know there are some, there's, 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 there's always that temptation to start trying to throw numbers around, but we want to kind of stay away from too much of that However, in the process of, of offering up a concept, the question will come up, well, what do you think that's going to cost? Well, if the door gets open, we can sort of answer that question as best we possibly can. Okay. With the help of advocates, of course, who actually did some of the research on it. They have some numbers that they put together, and that's part of the conceptual plan. So um, we're still looking to put that conceptual plan together. But I want to make sure that it doesn't look like a, this is what we're going to do. It's got to look like here are the concepts. Here's a couple of up. Here's a couple of uh, examples of those concepts that were developed. And yes, if we put a package treatment plant in, yes, we could develop like this. And this is what package treatment that would cost. Yeah, yeah. So, but there is but there is some movement happening on sewer. So so we're also looking at that as a possibility of um, of uh, having that. Uh, Opportunity come our way a little sooner than we than we had thought. So, I don't know. Do you did you want to address any of that, Vincenzo? Um, it's in its infancy. But yeah, yeah. The the long and short of it is that um, there may be an opportunity to pick up piggyback on Mass DOT, where they do all the legwork and we just come up with our end and they bring it to the line. I know I just simplified something really complex. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The reason I did is because like we could no. probably be here until five in the morning talking about just that little thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's something where it really turned the headline on its head. I mean the, the timeline because it just yeah. kind of yeah. something that God knows what would have, like right now. So it's still initial. It's uh, but it's something that would definitely, in my opinion, affect how a developer would look at Winter Street and exactly. how, more importantly, the owners, the current owners of Winter Street would look at it. Yep. And in my opinion, I think that because now this is, we're moving, we're going to be moving past the concept stage on that one, hopefully, mm -hmm. I think that it's something where the resolution on whether or not that happens, I think is going to hang very, loom very heavy on this, and mm -hmm. I and I really, I don't see how, outside of the concepts which we have to discuss, I don't see how anything concrete can move forward. It, it's just too big of a question. Right. So that's basically why we want to keep this conceptual, because if this other part of the project moves forward, we can say, okay, what do you think of our concept now? Because we've got it all done, we've got it, we'll have it on paper, it'll be something they can all look at. And, um, and, the, and the opportunity would, would be to say, okay, Here's the concept that we did. Now, now, do you think we can, uh, you know, can we move forward with this? So, and then maybe there'll be there, there could be a, a developer appetite for it at that point. So, so that's where. So we still want to work on Rich. We still want to work on developing that concept, but but in a conceptual way, not not so much in a planned way, uh, because I think that would. I don't think there's. At this time, I don't think there's, um, 
I don't think we have enough solid information, I guess is the best way to put well, it. We weren't supposed to come up with a plan. Yeah, yeah, we weren't supposed to come up with it. It's just supposed we to be. Just supposed well, to actually, all, yeah, we were supposed to evaluate whether or not if we put a package treatment plant, would it support, could, could it support? Put it in, right. Yeah, that's what we yeah, and, and, and that's what we got. Is, and the got answer that. is yes, and we have some concepts <coughs> that it can support, and so that's where, we're, so we have it. So that's where, that's where we're at. So. And I think it's important too to, to say at the end of, I mean, we were really coming to the end of our work with advocates given their contract and the amount of money and hours we've already expended. But I think it's okay to find a way to wrap up with them where they're leaving it with, here's the information we've gotten for you and here are your options. And to use that as a tool to further the discussion right. as needed. I mean, it's fine, I think, for us to present what we've done and what we, you know, what they've come up with, but to also say, here are the outstanding questions. There's this big question about how, should there be a public investment? If so, how much and of what nature? That's still sort of to be discussed, that's okay. But I think it's important for us to say, these are our findings and then this is what's still to come as we try to advance the project. I mean, that's sort of how I've seen yep. how we're gonna wrap things up with advocates. I don't know if anyone <coughs> thinks about that, but we can discuss it more, mm -hmm. you know, I was gonna put this on the agenda for like a full, you know, discussion, especially as we're talking about, yeah. you know, working on the presentation together at the next, um, yeah. And I want to keep my marketplace in there. <laughs> because it's, it's an exciting part. It's a, it's a thing that, that, that's actually been done, not that far from here, and it worked, and it's really nice, and, and, um, and, it's, and it's something that people would look forward to. And it's open past nine. <laughs> yeah. And it's not just boring housing. <laughs> We still roll them up at 10 to Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out. Well, depends on who's on the stage in the marketplace. <laughs> anyway. So okay. Can I just ask a question? Yes. Do we have any estimate, like on the sewage, when that might actually put the sewage on the <coughs> No, there's, there's some decisions to be made. I, I, I kind of put Vincenzo a little on the spot. But I, but information should flow both ways here. So, um, 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 but there are some things happening, there's some decisions that they're going to have to make which are going to influence this time frame. There's a brief, besides the brief update at the 16th meeting we had, then we're going to have, remember how we're going to have the whole meeting just on that? So that will give us a better idea of it. I think the date of September 8th was thrown out as a possible select board meeting date that we might, um, that might be we're possible probably. to have this on the agenda for, for a more robust discussion. Yep. So I think our goal would be... Let's have special edition one day. So, um, can, can I just comment? Yeah, yeah. So we have this, I mean, Daniel got to see this uh, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Um, you know, we have this survey that came back from UMass Gerontology. And uh, it, I don't really, but you know what, Rich? I think you're going down the wrong road with this. You're, you're, you're talking plan, we're talking concept, and that's all we're supposed to report on right now. And that's something for later. It's not for now. No, what and, I'm saying is that the, the 1,400 people who responded to the survey, which is a substantial amount of people, want to see some actions in town that CPC has control of. And one of the ones you're talking about is the accessory dwelling units. That's a very important one that you're working right. on. And that's a great one. Uh, they also want a community center. And if it's going to take 10 years to get it, I, I don't think that meets what they're looking for. And we've yeah. heard this request time after time after time after time. So, you know, timing is really important. And I, I think that just can't be ignored. So, I mean, you, and, and if you go to present to the select board or anybody in September without understanding what this survey said, I, I mean, just well, that's it's okay, right? because, because the, the, because the reason, reason why we're doing this. But if you recall, both, you know, all of the concepts that advocates brought to us had a community center in it. Right. So it didn't get ignored at all. No, so, I understand. So, that. so, so while it's a well, it's just con it's just a concept. It, they're going to say, well, and so conceptually, we just thought that you know that it would, this might well, be a good my place. My point is, is that there's, there's, it's almost you can't, um, you can't properly present your concept without understanding everybody understanding what the survey said. But you, and but Rich, Rich, we can't, we can't understand every survey. There's actually another group in town, another select board committee that's looking at that kind of building. What kind of building? Having a community center and funding it. Right. 
So we we shouldn't we shouldn't be looking at that. That's, that's not that's part, of, but that's not that's part of our charge mean. right now, Rich. Our charge was to come up with if we build a treatment plant, what would we gain from that if what, a treatment plant was built? So, so I, I don't want to right. be argument. And, me, and you've gone you've gone to the other side. Let me just and start, that's not what we should just, be doing. Let me just start again. If the select board is elected, I'm not select board, school committee is elected officials. If they were faced with a demographic that their school enrollment was going to go up by 50, 60 percent, they would be making plans to anticipate that growth. They would be looking at infrastructure. They would right. look at the programs and that you need to support right. that. Right. You are the community planning commission. You are elected to your to your, your roles. You know that the seniors in town are going from 26 percent to 40 percent in 10 years. You know that. This, this plan that you're working on is part of the answer. Yeah. But your community planning commission, so your charge is larger than just that concept. What? Your your plan is to We don't own the property, Rich. It's so no, no, it's, it's no it does it does have something. I can't plan for private property. It's and you're important. asking me to. Not, and we not, went down that road too far already. No, that's not what I'm saying to you right now. Your charge is bigger than just this property. Your yeah. charge well, is You know what, Rich, I think I know my charge. Okay, I really do. So Rich, I, I understand where you're where you're going, but I think we're I think we actually have as much of that as advocates could put in there in a the conceptual uh, capacity, I think we have it in there. It's it's in, there's a picture of it in all the different plans. I, I agree it's in there. But so so uh, so but, but again we want what we don't want to do what we don't want to do is create a situation where it's abundantly clear that the majority of the support that we would need disappears. The, the reason why you would lose support is if people don't understand the full story. And if they don't understand the full story, I'm talking about the yeah. full story, yeah. not just even your plan. It's if they don't understand the full story, they can't put it together. And so I, I understand exactly what you're saying, but I think that, but, in, but this is not, we don't, we don't have in our charge the ability to tell the whole story, which I wish we did, but we don't. We would actually, we would actually have to go to the Board of Selectmen and ask for more money in order to include that, or to, or to, or to take money that's gone past the conceptual stage and begin to develop a plan, which is what you're talking about. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have to understand, and, it, and it's already been done. The survey has already been done. Yeah. The people have already been evaluated. The, the information is already there. It's putting it together. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I think this would be a good topic for our strategic planning meeting because I do at this point because I think that if you can convince the board, our board, to give more money, you will get the answer to that. But yeah. I, that's I, that's what I think they're saying. Like, and again, I, I don't know what. Well, I I think that what we what we what we need to do initially here is answer the charge that we were given. We need to address the charge that we were given, and it did not have some of those components that you're talking about in it, that charge. There was no charge in there to develop a community center or a new town hall or any of those things. And yet, advocates thought that if we created a situation where we could put a town hall and have all the people there and, and put a community center and generation center and have them have it all in one site, everything brand new, that it would be a good idea. And so that's why they added it in. That's and they're our professionals, they're, the, they're our consultants. So we, um, we're gonna listen, you know, we're gonna pay attention to them and we're gonna take what they gave us and we're gonna present it, that's all, as a concept. And those things are in there. Yeah. No numbers, because we're not, we're not, we weren't asked for numbers. And we can't, and, and, and all we can say is that we know it's a need. Now, if, if, if uh, at the meeting, if somebody says, well, you know, I can give you some numbers on how, how important that is, that's fine. That's not our charge. So our presentation is going to be conceptual, and we can take comments from anybody once we're done, once we do that. Fair enough? I mean, that, that's... No, I, th I just think it's a... Without, again, without the audience knowing the rest of the story, I don't think it's a So you know what? So, so, so there has you, to be more than one story. So you, well, so you, have, a, uh, you have the rest of the story. I do. Okay. So, but it can't be part of our presentation. That's fine. Okay, but it can certainly be brought up at that meeting. But it has to be brought up at the same time. Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. I just, uh, I, he, he thought you were trying to put it into our presentation. No, no, you do your, do your own thing. It's yeah. Because I'm trying to give you Great. the why. We are, we are, so you're dragging us down this hall where we could be going down this hall. 
I, I right now, know. this is your thing, Rich, not our thing. And, and you're bringing it into our thing. That's what's confusing everybody. And yeah. not making it, not making so, no. it. So I think we're not in the same picture. I, okay. I understand what you're trying to do. And, and I, and I, and I. Because you have to hear the whole story too. Yeah, to but because, because I can tell you right now that we're going to get asked questions that we are not have, that we're not going to have addressed in this, in this conceptual plan. People are going to ask us about cost and about money. And advocates gave us some numbers and we'll say, well, our consultant gave us these numbers. So that's all. Those are the numbers we're going to give, not, not, um, not anything else. Just whatever we were given, some tool, the tools that we were given to come up with a conceptual plan. That's what we're going to give. And then at that meeting, the opportunity for you or anybody else to add, add to it, in whatever way they might they might think is helpful, I mean, we'll, we certainly would appreciate that, because anything that that anything that moves the project um, a little closer to a unanimous approval is going to be good. I agree. So 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 I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying definitely do it, but do it at the right time, so that you it's enhance not, not, so that you good. enhance what we're trying to do and not and not and not burden it because if we burden it too much. Everybody will go, no, no, it's too, too much. Uh, boards of selectmen, having dealt with them in other towns as well, are, are, you don't have to listen to this, notably conservative as far as it comes to spending money. So, so they, uh, you, you know, and, and rightfully so, because they feel their responsibility to the people of the town to not spend their money unwisely. And, and, and when you have a conceptual plan, they don't see that as rock solid. They, they, they don't want to let go of Christians until they're absolutely sure that this is the best possible thing. So, um, um, so you have to bring them down the road. You have to do, give them your conceptual plan, enhance it with the information that you can bring, then let's go from there. Because you are not going to be the only one that brings information to this meeting. Great. Okay, so, so we'll, we'll, and we'll take it from everybody. I, so that's, I think, the road we want to go. Is everybody okay with that? I understand. I'm going to make a changes to that. I, I think that's what we should be doing. I think we're set down this road already. Let's just go down it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. We're basically in the same place we were when we got the directive in the first place. But if that's the way we have to do it. Then that's the way we have to do it. Yeah. And we're going to present a plan that gives no answers to the same people who didn't share the vision in the first place without giving them any vision and expect a different answer. I don't think it's going to happen. But if that's how we do our business, then. I think yeah. we just wasted a lot of time, but yeah. that's where we're going to be. Well, do you, um, what would you like to see? I mean, I think we got charged with using that money to, to, to look at that plan, and we got a concept plan for it, and I, I agree with Rich. I think you've got to continue to fill in the blanks and, and take it beyond that. I mean, and we could say at that meeting before, that without spending $25,000, everybody knew a package treatment plan you can do the math, the size of the plan, you know what it costs, and you know how much development can, it can support. Mm -hmm. We didn't need any concept plan to know that. Mm -hmm. Like, put in a plan, build 800 units, everyone knows that can happen. Mm -hmm. So what, what are we, I don't even know what we're presenting at this point. Can I make a suggestion on yeah. presenting? When you do come to the select board, you come with a good answer of why a plan or concept should be taken seriously for land that owners don't want to sell, and you'll get a lot further. If you don't have that answer, then you're right, Ryan. It's a waste of time. Yeah, no, but nobody's taking it that far. We don't even know if they're going to sell or if they want to sell. But nobody's Take asking it. to do it either. But I'm just saying that's, I'm, I'm just suggesting yeah. that, as Mr. Hayden pointed out, it's, it, it, that is a huge question that when gets asked, gets ignored because no one has the answer. So we need an answer to that. And speaking with some property owners, so that I'm just saying that can be part of the concept. I, the, the concept, though, we don't want a plan. But like, if we, that's the bigger thing. I agree with Mr. Hayden that we're talking about private property, and if I own something I don't want to sell to you, you can't like if if you want to put a pool in my backyard, but I won't sell you my backyard, then it's a ridiculous analogy. I, I I'm, I'm simplifying. I see what you mean, though. But like. Because cause then I want to see someone come in front of the select board and say we should take it by eminent domain. Yeah, Rich. So the survey and consistently the plans you have done have had high particip participation around this level. The survey was 1,400 people. 1,400 people, 30% want to see a community center. What is the math on that, right? 
that is a voting block in my mind. That is a voting block that can come and make things happen. And they'll be willing to, um, I don't think that they even have to spend money, but I think that they would understand when you do the math. I think we're going to public hearing territory, and I would strongly suggest we solve this conversation. Mm -hmm. Strongly. But we can, we can get an opinion from KP tomorrow if we want to continue it. Yeah, all right. Um, well, so the bottom line is we're going to, we did what we could with what we had. We're going to we'll present a conceptual plan and see where we go with it. And, um, and then let questions or input that comes from anybody else at the meeting fill in as many blanks as we can. Um, and again, I, I, you know, we'll have these tools in our toolbox, if you will, as we move forward and hopefully as we move forward with sewer and so forth. And that would make it a lot more feasible and probably a lot more interesting to, to uh, the powers of be. so. Does it make sense to just, you know, speak, I mean, advocates will come and present with us if they, yeah. if we're looking to show more of sort of the value add of having a consultant make, you know, recommendations for what is and isn't possible. Yeah. Um, you know, advocates did the work of like reaching out to, you know, Right. developers and trying to figure out what was realistic and you know they I think that they have a lot to offer where you know where that's concerned yeah. I don't know if it's any better for us to try to simplify the presentation that they've created and have already given it maybe we just arrange to have them part of this I don't know I, mean, yeah, yeah, I think I think I think we kind of need them there I think we would need them there so that we could um, um, because I think they'll do a better job of explaining why, you know, why why they did what they did, why they came up with the concepts that they did, and um, these. It's not as if this kind of thing hasn't been done before. I mean, reading about it in Planning Magazine, reading what other towns and cities have done with private property, with getting them all together and creating these zones that are just absolutely gorgeous um, means that it can be done and it has been done. I don't know who did the sales job, but somebody did because it worked. And in a much larger piece of land than what we're talking and much bigger projects than we're talking here. So it's not like it hasn't been done. Um, and, they're, and they're familiar with that, so they'll be able to answer those kind of questions better than us. So perhaps it would be the best if they're there to develop, and we just do it, do it through the conceptual plan and see where we go with that. I mean, because they had within their presentation some, some recommendations for things that they think we should take a serious look at, um, right. which doesn't mean that we're going saying we're sure that this particular scenario is the best idea. Yeah. I'm, I don't know that we really are there. I don't know that we have a real consensus about that in particular right now. Right. But I do think that they can talk about what the value is in each of the scenarios that they right, come up with. Right. right. Yeah, so again, we would, um, um, yeah, let's bring advocates along and, and, uh, and let them do, let them do that. Let them give them the, uh, because they'll be, as I said, they'll be able to answer questions better than us and, um, at this point. And again, I, that's going to be, it's going to be clear that, see, I think we were looking for a resolution from them or a final product out of them, which we, which was not realistic. Right. Yeah. I think without having done part of, like, a large part of this project with some of the other committees who are also looking at similar things, yeah. it might not have been possible to do that. Well, one of the things we ran into was we kept talking to the facilities master plan, hoping that they were moving along at the same pace, at some pace, but they weren't. They kind of stopped because of the pandemic thing, and, and we, we tried to move forward. Um, and um, so then we got out of sync. So that's, that's another issue that, that's, uh, that's, that's, that that's muddies the waters a little bit, so. Yeah, I think they were always kind of behind us, though. Yeah. Well, we in, in, the beginning, in, the be in the beginning they weren't, but then, yeah. but then again, the whole, you know, let's face it, the whole 18 months, we, we all lost 18 months of traction, although we tried to keep going. You know, that we was did the keep going. We did, yeah. yeah, we didn't just try it. We did. But that wasn't. But that was not as. They didn't do that. That was not. Well, yeah, and nobody else was either. So that wasn't us. That wasn't something we were not destined for success at that point. I'm afraid. So, 
So, well, let's let's uh, let's move this along and see what we can do with it and, and, and go from there. We have plenty of other things to work on, like ADUs and all these other things. So, we have plenty of work for us to keep us busy. So, <laughs> don't have to focus so much on this. Just one thing as liaison before the before uh, just so I can pass it along to the chair. Can can I just? Uh, Get a brief summary when it's uh, complete of what's going to be presented. Yeah. So right, yeah. just you know, just so I can kind of give a reason of why we should put it in the agenda. Yeah. Why? I mean, do we still want to have a session at our next meeting where we discuss that um, the nature of the presentation? I well, mean, we'd have to have advocates come in. Yeah. Should we see if advocates can come to our next yeah, meeting? Yeah. Why don't we do that, that and then we'll and, and then, then we'll and, and then we'll explain to them and then and then of course then you'll be there. You'll hear. Yes. You'll hear what what the uh, what the plan is and, and what, how we look what we're looking at. Seventeenth, uh, right? Yes, our next meeting is the seventeenth. Yeah. So that I'll let everyone know. I'm just going to sleep in this room. We have a late <laughs> meeting the day before. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call you and wake you up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.